What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 11th of July in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in, and that I want to trade this month in the middle of July of 2019. So if you enjoy enjoy this video guys feel free to go down below and hit that like button and if you haven't yet joined our strive smart discord group chat or our strive smart facebook group you're missing out both of those are linked down below in the description box and are 100 free of charge so without further ado let's just hop right into it let's talk about what the markets did today starting off here with the s p 500 you guys can see we were nine cents short of closing above three thousand dollars we closed at twenty uh, two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety one cents up six dollars and eighty four cents at the close up 0.23 percent to close off the day today the Dow Jones did very good guys the Dow Jones did very very well today up 227 points and 88 cents up 0.85 percent and this is mostly because ticker symbol UNH today did very well. United Health Group Inc. This one was up almost $14 at the close, up 5.53%. And this had a pretty good weight on the Dow and allowed the Dow to do better than the three major markets that we talk about on this channel. The NASDAQ is currently down $10, guys, down 0.13%. It closed under $79.20. And if you are all watching or if you guys out there were watching, Watching um, tech stocks today, especially Amazon. Amazon took a pretty big dump in the middle of the day today, and you guys can see how that affected um, the Nasdaq. You know, Apple took a dump as well. Facebook, you know, Netflix. These were all. Um, positions or stocks rather that were closing in the red that closed in the red today and you guys can see how it affected the nasdaq here take a look at 12 p.m it was coasting at about 79.56 12 p.m eastern standard and we took a massive massive dump and we'll talk about some of these tech stocks here in a couple of minutes so stay tuned if you do want to hear and and see my opinion and how i break those tech stocks down so that's just a brief um, you know, a uh, synopsis of what ended up happening today in the markets. Let's break down some technicals very quickly on the S&P, then the Dow, then the NASDAQ. And honestly, guys, you know, other than the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P, the technicals, they look a bit similar to what I talked about in yesterday's video. But of course, we do have a lot of new viewers to the channel every single day. And I would be doing a disservice to those new viewers out there um, if I don't break this down for them, right? So let's just do the breakdown very very quickly here the S&P 500 at this point we all know we've been hitting all-time highs here over the past couple of weeks pretty much every single week we've been hitting a new all-time high or at least that's how it feels right guys and the main resistance that we were able to break out of was at about 29.50 to about 29.75 this was a spot where we topped off at um, in 2018 in the month of September back in the month of April April back in the middle of June, right? We got hit there and sold off. And now that we broke out of that level of resistance, we're looking to hold that level as a new support. And we actually did confirm that level as a new support really just a couple of days ago when we broke out of this wedge, this wedge that I have drawn out here for you guys. I was talking about how if we were to break out of that wedge, not only would it solidify the pop on top of that old resistance as a new support, it would would also confirm the bounce on top of the 50 SMA support here on the 20 day one hour chart and it would also confirm the breakout above the wedge which would be a bullish move so those would be three you know, back a couple of days ago, if that were to happen, which it obviously did now that we are in the future, you know, those would have been three bullish moves that we were looking for, and all three of them, um, you know, pretty much ended up playing out, right? So now we see something else happening that I, I think I mentioned this in yesterday's video. If I didn't, I was definitely thinking about this yesterday heading into today as well, that we noticed how we saw a double top here on the S&P 500, literally right where we closed above that today at 
and twenty nine ninety five. Notice how we this was a top back on the third of July and also on the fifth of July. We kind of had difficulty breaking out of those levels. Now that we actually popped into three thousand, we broke out of that level of resistance, and it seems like we're closing above it as a new support right now. That is looking pretty pretty good on a technical basis here. So tomorrow, guys, for this uptrend to continue and let me just solidify this right now. The uptrend is still intact, guys. You know, the 50 SMA is still being... Um uh, uh, written as a support level right now. If we notice on other chart frames, um, time frames, you know, the uh, S&P is making higher highs, higher lows. The uptrend is still intact. And for it to continue, very uh, very basic, guys, you know, we need to see a hold above $3,000 at this point because if we hold this level of resistance as a new support, which again, we are doing right now towards the close of the market, not only are we going to be holding that level, we're also going to be holding the 50 SMA which has been a support and is a critical level for the S&P to hold for the uptrend to be continuing here. So very important to hold 3,000 and honestly to start popping up here for a higher high. But at this point, guys, you know, the markets have been rallying for a very long time. You know, the markets do suspect a rate cut. The rate cut, in my opinion, is heavily priced in. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm having thoughts right now, you know, like, if we get this rate cut, I'm sure the markets, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'm sure the markets might rally a bit more in this month of July, maybe for the next two weeks. Who knows? We might rally another 1%, 2%. You know, let's see how it plays out. But my thinking now is if we get this rate cut, which a lot of people are saying we're going to get, you know, Jerome Powell pretty much hinted to it again yesterday of 25 basis points, 25 basis points. If we get this, you know, is the market going to, you know, dump? Is it going to sell the news after we get the rate cut since it's so um, built up at this point, since the optimism, since the price of the rate cut is so heavily built in? You know, this is something that I'm thinking about. You know, maybe the markets take a dump after this rate cut announcement comes officially. So I would love to know what you guys actually have to think about that. This is something that I've been thinking about um, throughout the day and honestly throughout the past couple of weeks. And I would love, again, to know what you have to think about that, shoot me a comment down below. So going over here to the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones actually hit an all-time high today at $27,088.45. We broke out of that resistance at about $26,850, about $26,900. It seems like we are holding it and bounced on top of it as a new support, which is very, very attractive right now for the continuation of the uptrend. Very similar to the S&P 500 here, guys. We broke out of a wedge a couple of days ago, which was a very bullish move. At the same time, we broke out of that wedge. We also popped above the 50 SMA. We held that level as a support, which is also very, very good here on the Dow. And then we ultimately broke above that level that I just said at $26,850. We broke out of it, held it as a support, and popped up for an all-time high. Everything is looking good right now you know, for the continuation of the uptrend on the Dow Jones. And notice how the Dow, again, the uptrend is intact, but it's overbought. I don't know. What is this rate cut going to do to the Dow? Are people going to sell the news when it comes out, you know, that we're officially getting the rate cut? I don't know, guys. That's something that I'm being a bit um, cautious about and that I'm suspicious about at the same time. So that are, those are the technicals really for the Dow. At this point, we may see a bit of a pullback. We may see a bit of a retest on that 50 SMA, on that old resistance as a new support. These are things that could potentially happen here, especially since we had a pretty strong day today of almost 1% um, in the green for the Dow Jones. So going over here to the NASDAQ, guys, the NASDAQ on the 20-day, one hour, I know there's a bunch of trend lines here. It may be a bit confusing, but focus on this 50 simple moving average, guys, this green line that you do see streaking across my screen right now. That level has been a support, uh, uh, has been a support right? 
Notice that. And today, we pulled back from almost $8,000, which was an all-time high today at about $79.63. We pulled back, and it seems like we're holding that level as a support. So as of now, the weakness in the NASDAQ, I'm simply considering it a pullback due to this moving average being maintained as a support. Very, very critical point here, guys. And if we're going back out to, let's say, the 90-minute, you guys can see, you know, we popped out of this resistance at 7,900 roughly. We're obviously trending above it still, and now it seems like we want to hold that level as a support, right? This was also a level of resistance back on the 4th of July, literally one week ago. So these are levels that I'm watching for a potential bounce on the NASDAQ and for it to continue upwards. But let's say, you know, we start to break these levels. Let's say we start to get back into 7,800, 77. That's going to be pretty um, uh, alarming for potential sell-off at that point for the NASDAQ. So, very simple, guys. Not much to talk about here. The technicals are all pointing to um, the uptrend still being intact, at least for the three major indexes, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P that we talk about, that I talk about here on the channel on a day-to-day -day basis. So, let me know down below, what do you guys think about this stuff? What do you guys think about the markets what stocks are you personally watching let me know down below in the comment section and now let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading so today um, you know, I was watching a bunch of inverse ETFs, and there's one that actually opened up a pretty nice gap here towards the end of the market, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. But I actually didn't capitalize on any of the inverse ETFs today, guys. I actually capitalized on 3M, which 3M, it, it did very well today, surprisingly. I didn't think because of the pattern that it, that it's been on, I didn't think that it was going to recover the way that it did. But we can see here, and you can clearly see it now, guys, if I zoom in a bit more, you know, there's a strong support on 3M at about 165 to about $166. Notice how that was a support back in May, on the May 20th, um, roughly May 20th to the end of May, it was a support level before we broke it. And it was also a support back in the middle of June on June 15th when we popped to that higher high and we went on that little run for a couple of weeks. So this level, guys, it's been bounced above. It's been held above on two separate occasions over the past, I would say, month and a half at this point. And notice how we sold off aggressively here from the resistance at about 175 down to that support that I just talked about at 165 and that opened up a 6% margin. And honestly, guys, I wasn't even paying attention to 3M up until this morning when I was like, wait a second, 3M is holding that support. I didn't even realize this because it was taking a beating, I kind of just took it off my radar because of the beating it was taking over the past three days, and I was like, ah, whatever, 3M, it's getting squashed again, but I actually looked at it, and I was like, oh my goodness, this could be a good potential trade, not only for today, but for the next couple of days if it does end up filling the gap back up to 175, but let's talk about very quickly what I personally did today on 3M, and it actually deals with the 20-day, one-hour chart here. Notice how, again, we talked about the sell-off, opened up about 5-6% on 3M. We dipped into 164, ended up popping up, retesting that 165 level as a support yesterday, and this morning, this is actually when I started taking more attention into 3M, we actually retested 165, 166 again, and we launched above it very, very aggressively, and we kind of built the staircase pattern of a higher low, higher low, and then today we popped again and we started pushing to a higher high. So this actually gave me and put 3M on my radar. At this point, I was like, okay, I'm watching it, but there is a resistance coming up, which is this 50 SMA here. And at that point this morning, right, this was more towards the middle of the day. 
You know, I was telling myself, 3M is reversing, it's doing quite well, but we're, we're also getting a bit overbought here, and we're getting to that 50 SMA resistance. I don't want to get caught in a trap here, I don't want to get caught and get rejected by that 50 SMA and pretty much lose money. So the whole idea here was to see if it was going to break out of that 50 SMA, and if it were, that was going to be the bull flag, that bullish move that I wanted to see before getting my money working in 3M. And if we take a look on the one day, one minute, you guys can kind of see when we were hitting that, um, uh, uh, the 50 SMA support on, or resistance rather, on the 20 day, one hour. It was roughly this time period between 12 and 1.30. You guys can see Eastern Standard Time, by the way. And you guys can see you know, there was a brief double top forming here, and we started to sell off. Notice how this time period, if we go back to the 20-day, one hour, that same time period, that's where we were struggling to get above that 50. But then once we popped the 50 SMA on the 20-day, one hour here, and if we go back to that, what time frame was I just on? The one-day, one minute? You know, once we broke out... You know, we pulled back on the one day, one minute, and we were holding that 180 SMA support, which was a support from a couple of days ago, really for the past two, three days, as you guys can see on this intraday chart. So that gave me even further validation to get into 3M, and I pretty much just got in on this dip right here to 167.58. We started to pop up on top of that 180 SMA. We were breaking out at this point um, at about 2, 2.30 on uh, the 20 day one hour chart we were breaking out of that 50 SMA and I ended up just taking a little position here it might have been a bit earlier it was a bit early I'll be honest with you guys but I got in at about 167.80 167.75 ish roughly we popped up to about 168.30 pulled back we popped up again we struggled to get out of that old resistance so I was like crap this might be another double top on 3m let me just sell out so that's where I ended up selling out right before this big run I literally missed the big run I sold off right before it but that's okay guys and that's what I ended up doing today it wasn't much of a crazy day honestly it was a very small trade day you could see from 167.80 ish up to where I ended up selling out I literally made like 0.3 percent it's nothing compared to um what I typically make and I'm not mad at myself I'm not uh like you know kicking cans I'm not pissed off anything like that any day that I make money guys I am happy about it but 0.4 0.3 percent you know that is a bit of a smaller profit compared to what I normally take like yesterday on my apple trade my overnight swing trade I made about 1.3 1.4% but that is okay guys being in the green whether it's 0.1 0.5, 2% is always better than losing money than taking a 5, 6, 7% loss than taking a 1, 2, 3% loss, right? And that is how I view it, you know, whenever I make a trade, even if I'm like, ah, that's nothing, right? 0.2%, I always switch my mentality and I'm like, Stas, that is good compared to losing money or you know, taking a loss or maybe not even taking a trade at all, right? Because I did see potential in 3M. I pulled the trigger and that's what ended up happening, right? So 3M, that's what I ended up doing today. Let me know down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about that trade? What did you do today? Did you trade 3M? Are you watching 3M? Um, I would love to know, guys. So let me know down below in the comment section. So very quickly now, let's talk about that ETF, that gap down a bit. It might be a good opportunity here over the next couple of days. And that ETF is UGAS, guys. UGAS today, we gapped down a pretty big amount. We saw a double top over the past two days of trading on the 10th and the 11th of July. We pretty much topped at about $20, failed getting above that level. That's a pretty bearish move. And then we dumped today, as you guys can see, ended up closing at $18.00. Per share. We broke that 50 SMA here, which has been a support. That's pretty alarming. But the thing that I'm seeing now and the thing that I'm thinking of is, hey, maybe we sell off, maybe down to $17, maybe down to about $17.20. 
And at that point, we may hold the 180 SMA here on the 20-day 1 hour, and we may hold this old resistance, which is now a new support, at around 1725. This would give you guys the much-needed cool-off period, the much-needed breather that it needs since it's been so hot here over the past couple of days. So this is what I'm watching, honestly, guys. Let's say we pull back to here. This could be a good entry point. And for those of you guys that don't know, you guys trades based upon natural gas natural gas slash ng is a future natural gas futures whenever this is going up in price you gas is going up in price at a 3x rate since it is a 3x leveraged etf you gas is right so natural gas here you guys can see it took a much needed cool off period as well we saw the double top at 248 we saw how that correlated over to you guys and now we're pulling down so a level to see natural gas hold above potentially is going to be at around two dollars and 35 maybe two dollars and 36 cents notice how that's an old resistance that's uh, that's really a new support at this point and that would also put us on top of that 180 SMA support so I'm watching those very closely heading into tomorrow guys you know crude oil has not really been doing anything honestly but one thing that I am liking about it right now is that it is holding $60, $60.50, that uh, old resistance. It's holding it as a new support right now, which is really good for us to potentially fill up to that next gap, which is at $63.50. And honestly, guys, since crude oil has been so hot recently, like extremely hot, it's gone from $50 to $60 in the matter of like two, three weeks. That's 14, 15%. And the RSI is very overbought you know i don't know if it's honestly going to fill this gap all the way but as long as it's holding above this level of support you really can't challenge that because this is a key technical spot that it would be holding above and until it breaks that you know you have to um believe that there is some chance right that it does end up filling the gap but let's say we break here guys which again is is, is likely to happen as well there's a chance that happens as well you know if we break that bring the r side down a bit we may be retesting that 50 sma support maybe that level at about 58 dollars as well so i'm watching that you know apple amazon today let's talk about some tech stocks very quickly you know apple saw a resistance at about 205 we pulled back holding the 50 sma right now you know if nasdaq bounces if tech bounces you know this could be a bounce back play tomorrow as long as we're holding that 50 sma and above 200 dollars you know amazon today AMZN, it actually did very well. It filled up the gap to 2030, which is a spot that we've been talking about a lot on the channel. And I actually talked about this spot back in um, Sunday's video. In the video, the top two stocks, or rather the top couple of stocks, I'm watching week two of July. We talked about this potential fill. It filled the gap completely, but now we're noticing um, a cool off period in Amazon, which is very, very um, needed at this point. It's needed, right? We hit that spot. It's been on a ridiculous run now i would like to see it pull back and maybe retest maybe 1975 maybe 1980 maybe these these levels here where would, it would bring the rsi down to a healthy spot and offer a better um entry point um for amazon right on the 20 day one hour notice how we're right above the 50 sma so this could be a spot where hey we might hold above it right 1990 from 1990 up to 2030 that could be a two percent potential swing there our size looking healthy on this time frame so that could definitely be um, a good entry point on amazon you know the five day 15 minute we're holding above the 180 sma that's pretty good the five day five minute you guys can see the bearish cross here you know, we're dumping on this time frame, which again is very important why you should be looking at multiple time frames because multiple time frames tell different stories, right? As you guys saw on the different time frames for um, Amazon stocks. So, guys, that's pretty much it, right? You know, tomorrow I'm watching you guys. That's definitely the number one ETF, inverse leveraged ETF that I'm watching. You know, I'm looking to see maybe tech rebounds. You know, Apple, Amazon, these both have been hot, they both have some margin of profit right now to offer so those would be interesting in my opinion to look into and of course the market etfs as always you know if the nasdaq pops up tomorrow tqqq could be a play you know let's say the nasdaq sells off sqqq could be a play here of course velocity um 
the uh, what's it called the TVIX here the velocity um, 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 ETF that goes up whenever the VIX is going up it trades on volatility here let's say we start to sell off aggressively volatility kicks in TVIX can be one that I will definitely be playing right and then of course on the flip side bull ETFs SPXS actually no that's not the bull ETF the SPXL is the bull ETF this goes up whenever the S&P is going up I'm watching this one as well so if you guys enjoy this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button again it really supports me and supports the channel in general if you want to see more content from me subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video and don't be shy to shoot me a DM on Instagram on discord to join our discord to join our Facebook group and really just interact with the community I love seeing new faces in there and we are getting new faces every single day so I hope you all again enjoyed the video I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.